Have you experienced the deformable part already? And maybe you have made some good or bad experience. Let me know in the comments below. It came to my ear several times that the formal part is not working for some of my clients. And once I've had some hands on in order to do some research on the files, it was pretty much always the same or a similar problem that appeared. By the way, I've already uploaded a video concerning the formal part one major problem that can be easily solved, which I'm going to link to the upper right of this video now. Today, I'm going to be talking about this hose, which is a very simple use case and can be solved. But what if I would like to add some further elements to it, like datum coordinate systems at the end and start of the tube? Is it still possible? Maybe you have experienced already. Maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. Maybe you have made bad experience. Uh, you didn't get it to work. I'm going to show you a solution today. It's very simple, but you have to know one cat secret. As you can see, I've used some routing elements and maybe you have experience with routing. It wouldn't be necessary to use the formal parts within the routing environment because those shapes like circles, etc., is available already and can be deformed by just picking up the path. But maybe you have no experience and maybe for any other kind of reason, complexity like adding further elements to the path, you will have to use the deformal part. And today I'm going to show you how to do that. Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Simon from BizLearn. Hi and welcome to another NXCAD Secrets tutorial on my YouTube channel. I just want to do a little demonstration of what my goal is and what I'm talking about. Here you can see there is some kind of tube already, which I'm just going to delete. It's one of the stack elements from the routing operation, which I've added already. But instead of adding a stack element, I'm going to add a deformable tube, which I've also created already. And I'm going to do it from scratch in order to show you the problem areas and the little cat secrets you have to follow. Y assemblies add component. I'm going to add the tube. Position is not important. I'm just going to apply and select my path. In that case, it's tangent curves. The reason why you cannot use feature curves here is routing objects are no feature. There are no regular features as the ones which you're familiar with. So I'm going to use tangent curves and just select the path. I'm going to confirm this. And here it is my deformed object, which is not a typical stack object. And when you have a closer look at this, you can see there are datum coordinate systems at the start and the end of the tube which usually cannot be created by using the formal part without knowing this trick I'm going to show you today. And the reason I've added these elements is I've also created some adjacent geometry like these connectors or flanges, however, which I can now easily add to start and end by also using add component. And I'm going to use the Caesars filter makes life easier. You can also use, if you have a large assembly, of course, below interaction options, use the preview window. And of course, those elements can also be added via the routing library, which I have not defined yet. That's the reason why I'm using the formal part, etc. Let's get started with the creation of our new deformable part. I'm just going to hide those elements here. The formal part can be anything, can be a spring, can be anything that is deformed within the assembly context. And very common also is something like a tube, like a hose. In order to create a tube, of course, we need a curve, which we can use as a reference. And under normal circumstances, I would have said, just use the line, keep it simple. But in this case, we will have to use a studio spline. And I'm going to show you why. 
I'm going to start with a line and explain the problem. Maybe it's a secret for you as well. We don't need to create a reference to the datum coordinate system. It makes life easier if you just hide it. I'm going to create a simple line on a random position and just have a look at the distance approximately. It's 100 millimeter. It shouldn't be 10,000 or 100 or something like that. It should be something realistic. I'm going to apply this and now we need points. I'm going to create a first point by using point on curve edge. I'm just going to reset this. And I'm going to select the curve in the part navigator. Every time you select in the part navigator, you're going to create a reference to feature curves and not the curve itself. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just have a look at my other videos where I'm always discussing the selection rules and how to select and why we should always create a reference to the possible oldest object, which is the feature itself and not the line, which is just resulting from the feature. My location is, of course, on zero, but I'm going to use the percentage value. I'm going to apply this and select the line again. And now it's on 100%. Because independent from its length, it should always be at the end of the curve. I'm going to confirm now. I've got two points for my coordinate systems at start and end of the curve. And now I'm going to add some further details like datum axis. Also here, we have to use on curve vector. And below orientation, you can see in this drop down five opportunities. But once you select a line, it's reduced to three opportunities. And one of them, one of the five, we would have needed for a purpose. And that's the reason why using a line in this case is not possible. For just the creation of a tube it is, but not if you want to add further details like datum coordinate systems or any other kind of elements. It might not make sense to use it. It's reset here. And the question now is, can we reuse this construction? Yes, of course we can. We just need to replace things. So I'm going to create a studio spline instead of the line. It's very simple. I'm just going to reset this and create three points. That's it. Make sure that it's approximately the same size, like approximately 100 millimeter in length in my case, something realistic. And there are several opportunities now. We can replace, we can copy paste. Let's try replace. I'm going to replace my line while I right click by the spline. Center mouse button, spline, center mouse button again, and here you can see. You can delete the line, there are no child relations. It's so simple. Replace, copy, paste, every time, so simple. All right, we've got the points, now we need datum axis. And I'm going to be using on curve vector. I'm going to select my curve within the part navigator again. Percentage value, zero. And it's tangent, but I'm going to reverse the direction. I'm going to apply. Same thing again. I mean, you can also copy and paste this because we need four axes. I'm going to select here. This time as well, at the start of the curve, but it's not tangent, it's by normal. These are going to be my references for the coordinate system the point and two axes, that's all we need. And I'm going to confirm again. Now I'm going to create my coordinate system. First of all, clean this up a little bit. This point is not referenced yet. I'm going to move it to the bottom and I'm going to make this the current feature. Here it is, datum ceases. I'm going to be using Z, X, axis and origin as a reference. Here is my origin point, here is my z-axis, and here is my x. So simple. I've selected within the part navigator, it's not necessary to select within here. And now, instead of creating all these four references again, I'm going to use copy and paste. I mean, this point 
we also could have copied, so I'm going to try it by reusing those existing elements before the point. I'm going to delete this point afterwards. So, Control C, Control V. We need an object for the endpoint. Here is my spline. It's the same one, so I, I, there was no need to select it. Nothing else you can do. I'm going to confirm, and here are my elements. But I have to switch position here. And what you can do is you can select those elements and use the return key on the keyboard and type in the end value 100%. Three times, use the tap button to switch cells. You could think about reversing the C axis. It depends on your connectors within the assembly. We can do it afterwards as well, of course. And I can delete this point and create my tube. We need geometry in order to create a deformable part, meaning solid or sheet bodies. I'm going to use surface. And below more, you can find the tube. I'm going to select the path. Diameter is, let's say, 5 millimeters. I'm going to confirm. Here is my tube, and now we can create a deformable part. Menu, Tools, Define deformable part, Define a name, which I won't do now. Define what features are required. It's not a datum coordinate system. We haven't created a relation to it. I mean, you could also delete this, by the way. It's all the other features, but not the spline, because the spline is going to be our reference. I'm going to add those elements. I'm going to activate reference. And here you can see those references have to be selected when adding this to an assembly. So an X is not just asking, it's not just going to be asking for a spline or any other type of curve. It's going to be asking for many, many other things. And that's a problem. That's maybe the point where some of you were struggling in the past, because even if you select those element elements, even if you remove geometry here from this list, it's not going to work. And here comes the cat secret. And it's something I've mentioned in many, many videos. Once you create a relation to a curve, which is reused several times, like here, do the following. Create a copy of it, an associative copy. Therefore, you can, for example, use extract geometry or the standalone composite curve. I'm going to select my curve now. And that's not it. We have to replace it. But that is simple. Right click your spline, replace by the composite curve. The composite curve changes its position. And here's an information that a number has changed, but it's just an information. There is just a relation to the composite curve. And the spline itself of course, has only one relation. That's very important. And now let's have a look. Menu, Tools, Define the formal part. I'm going to add my features, everything but the spline and the datum coordinate system. And below references, you can see only one instance. And this is an indicator for not having any problems at all, just using an additional copy of your curve will save your day. If you have this or a similar solution, you're going to be working on. I'm going to finish this. And now I'm going to add this model one to my assembly. And there is no constraint required. So I'm just going to confirm. And now I'm going to select my curve, but it's not feature curves. There is something deformed already, which I'm going to hide now. It's the old deformable part. You cannot select this. I'm going to use connected curves or tangent curves, whatever. And 
here it is, a very, very thin house I've created. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned something. It was more information than just how to create a deformable part, as you might have recognized. If you really had no idea what I was talking about, I recommend you watching some of my other cat secret videos, which are not so beginner friendly. But once you've got it, you're gonna get them all. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this the formal part and what you have learned maybe. And also don't forget to subscribe and enable the annotation toggle to be informed about new uploads. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.